to see all of you here. This, um, this is my great honor to be here this time and uh, to make a speech uh, of the, the mind or the consciousness and the wisdom, which is uh, a very basic knowledge uh, to the Buddhist practitioner. It's really nothing special. <laughs> it is a very our <coughs> everyday life uh, with the family life, uh, business life, or whatever life. So this is a kind of a ground that we need to be observe. The function of consciousness and the wisdom is a very principle, and also it's our daily life, and there is nothing, nothing special subject. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, from the first the turning of or turning the wheel of the Dhamma by our Buddha Shakyamuni in Saranath in Varanasi in India, the every aspect of his teachings is for the purpose of uh, the uh, realizing the uh, essence of the consciousness and uh, reforming the consciousness and uh, reshaping the consciousness and uh, the let you realize the so-called the enlightenment is uh, all something to do with the, our everyday consciousness and our everyday mind. So therefore, to me, the mind is the our fundamental potential, the way you can uh, bring, bring, bring up or reveal those, uh, uh, the, the profound novel qualities which you are temporarily unable to see or unable to sense, but uh, ultimately or gradually the, those, the such a wonderful and the co profound qualities is no other than you cannot make separate from this our very normal consciousness. So let me start the, the subject of uh, the mind uh, from the, uh, the teachings of our Buddha Shakyamuni. The, <coughs> the verses that he has mentioned in the Sutra let me let me uh, recite you know, the Tibetan in Tibetan first. Semni. We classified into three. Semni. Second, Semmachi De. Third, Semji Rangshini Vesavao. Three. Okay? So first Semni means simply you could say in English mind is. Yeah. So the first, the classification of the mind, he says that mind is. The second, mind devoid of mind. Yeah. <coughs> third, because the mind is the clear light. So this three, the classification, based on this, then explanation goes on. So, um, first, uh, when Buddha says uh, the mind is, so that means the, the definition of the mind, so uh, he explained through Four Noble Truths. The teaching of Four Noble Truths is very much based on the, the definition of the mind or the characteristic of the mind because we can simply sense that uh, uh, the mind that is uh, tamed, disciplined, and the mind that is not uh, uh, tamed and undisciplined. So therefore, like the Four Noble Truths, the, the truth of the uh, suffering and the truth of the, uh, the cause of the suffering, then the truth of the cessation, and the truth of the the path to cessation. So you see the the cause and the result of the, the nirvana 
and the cause and the result of the samsara. So, what does make the difference, difference between these two? Because that one, if you have been made that uh, tame your mind, then, then, then the cessation and the path to cessation comes. The mind that is not disciplined, the mind that is being distracted, the mind that is being uh, uh, because, uh, no disciplined or untamed, then because of uh, the suffering and the cause of suffering. So it's very clear. So that he's uh, very much teaching of uh, Four Noble Truths is uh, uh, something to do with our, uh, this uh, everyday uh, mind and the consciousness. Uh, meditation of uh, mind or meditation on mind, whatever you call, um, it's uh, not so simple and it's not so easy uh, without examining our everyday mental function. It's so important. <coughs> so the basis of meditation of that is uh, like so-called compassion or loving kindness or the meditation of impermanence and the meditation of uh, the whatever uh, the shunyata or emptiness uh, whatsoever, but uh, these are all very much based on our everyday mental function. Mm -hmm. So for this reason, um, as a practitioner or ordinary being, it's uh, nothing to do with um, uh, something special practice. It is our daily life that you observe your mental function, <laughs> that you observe mental attitude, you pay attention. So we need attention. So attentively you observe your matter function day to day, then eventually <coughs> that you will experience uh, the what mind deals with the phenomenon so-called the consciousness is the principle or the root of the good and the bad result. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> so therefore, the the concept of uh, a mind training that I have been spoken in the past um, in various the, the various places uh, is not really something a special uh, kind of uh, the tradition of uh, Kadampa uh, practice. It is a very uh, basic and a very a foundation to all Dharma practitioners. When we talk about Buddha Dharma in Tibetan word Chö, Chö means correction. So we need to do correction in everyday life. Lack of this, we get problem. Yes, problem come from within, not from outside. That I can prove. Hmm. And uh, so you don't need to go back to Buddha. And uh, so you have to prove from a reasonable uh, kind of uh, the, uh, the analysis. So therefore, in order to avoid such um, the unwanted situation, then one should uh, very much base on our uh, the critical analysis uh, in our daily life. If you are really attentively work with your mind and the consciousness, I consciousness, there are so many I consciousness. <laughs> so you have a plenty of choice actually. The uh, eye consciousness, ear consciousness, the nose consciousness, the tongue consciousness, you know, the body consciousness, the mind consciousness, and then gross wise and the subtle wise. There are so many choices. It's like you are in the supermarket. <laughs> so yes. So there's no problem. Uh, getting those consciousness. So you have so many objects and uh, you have so many the phenomena that you can be observed. So through these, then slowly you will get so much interest for the training of your mind. Otherwise somebody tell you, train your mind. Oh, what does it mean? Uh, what is training mind? So therefore you have to start from the uh, basic understanding of the mind the characteristic, then you can train the mind, and with the with the flow of 
this is a critical analysis so that you can reach to the, the, the perfection wisdom. So, because of the reason that I have mentioned earlier on, um, that the subject of mind is uh, uh, nothing special. Nothing special in the sense of uh, it's uh, nothing uh, to do with the religious figure, and it's nothing to do with the like, uh, medita concentrated meditation figure. It is our very much basic uh, everyday life. So the only thing that you have to, what you have to do is you have to pay attention with the every single aspect of your movement of life, body, speech, mind. These are the three more main activities of a human life, right? So bodily you are moving, verbally you are moving sometimes too much, <laughs> and um, so mentally also moving every second, every minute, the more busier. So then if you walk with these three doors, we call it Tibetan Go Sum. Go means door, so Sum means tree. So the three doors, there is the body, the speech, the mind. So our life is very much related to, directly related to these three doors right so therefore what you have to do you just pay attention you know? when you do something physically pay attention because that is also directly to connect it the capacity of your the sentient the the sensible sense of uh, understanding and the feeling experience and verbally also you are moving the same time you pay attention because when you move your your voice then there is a experience also and then mentally when you move of mental function mind functions there is also experience so it's not like something like the inanimate an inanimate like a table like a stone or like a glass is a, a food really doesn't react to you because hey they don't react to you because um, it's a lack of capacity to speak out and uh, because no sensation he has no sensation no feeling and no experience so therefore human or being because we are very much sentient so that means we are very capable to perceive the sensation the experience so therefore that is our life while well, life is nothing special other than the experience and the sensation themselves so what i'm trying to tell you here is uh, the Tibetan word Sen. The Sen that is the, uh, like it, it is something, the sensation or the feeling uh, that everything that receives, everything in the sense like experience. So mind that is the only the phenomena which can clearly experience suffering and uh, happiness, the pleasure and the pains. So we are very much uh, going through these sensations, the almost everyday life, right? So from morning till night, and uh, even in the dreams, you are very busy with these sensations. So therefore we are never able to get rid of this sensation and the feeling, the fears and the hopes, extra, whatever you call, there are many descriptions in the philosophical way of introduction of the mind and also the direct teaching of a meditation like uh, the, 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 the Dzogchen teaching and the Mahamudra teaching and the Mahati teaching and the Shunyata, like a middle, a middle school, the the introduction of a mind. There are so many way of explanation or introduction, but uh, the principle or the basic mind is uh, very much in our everyday life. So why I'm repeating again and again here is because we are very much uh, ignorant with that. Although we know, but we are very much ignorant with these uh, the what what uh, the phenomenon, and uh, good things happened. You never observe your mind, and uh, you are automatically uh, 
related, uh, automatically related to the external factor. Oh, this thing makes me happy. That thing makes me happy. So when you are unhappy, you blame on others or other factors. You say, oh, he or she made me unhappy. Or this substance made me unhappy, angry, uh, irritation. So you, your emotion, you believe everything comes from outside, external factors, that you never believe these phenomena come from within. So this is our principal problem. So therefore, you don't work. You don't work with your mind at all. Never. You never work with your mind. So therefore, our practice never go through smoothly. So problem comes one after another. <laughs> so therefore, um, it's a very interesting teaching given by uh, the Buddha Shakyamuni. Um, I believe that uh, many of you have uh, been heard of for this teaching that we call the training of the uh, proper the mental attitude. Yeah? See, you can call the appropriate appropriate uh, the attitude. Sometimes you call discipline or morality. So I'm not so familiar with the English terms. So how much that terms uh, really uh, brings the the essence of uh, such a training. So therefore, I don't dare to say, you know, much about the morality or discipline. That sometimes you can feel pressure with the term of morality. That is something like the law and the regulation of a Buddhism. So given by Buddha. So it's a rather heavy instead of feeling comfortable with that. So therefore, the appropriate mental attitude is very much based on your everyday turning of your mind. So you don't need someone be next next to you say that, hey, what are you doing? This, 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 is not the, this is not the right way. That's because you feel rather very difficult because someone is next to you, so-called teacher, master, guru, whatever, so who observe your attitude, single aspect of your attitude, you feel rather do it uh, unwillingly uh, <laughs> instead of willingly. So it's not that Buddha does not this idea at all. So he gives us very openness, uh, openness of practice, which he said, the practice is your own responsibility. It's not teachers, it's not masters, it's not gurus. It's your own responsibility. So you know what I mean? So I don't need to explain what does it mean. You know, <laughs> unless you pretend. <laughs> put it that way. <laughs> so Shantideva says in Bodhisattva China Avatara, <coughs> the fifth chapter, uh, the first verse I read in Tibetan first. Lapa Sumar and Dubai Rapto Jimde Simsunte. Semde Sumar Machena Lapa Sumar Yominu. Which means um, if anybody wants to do practice, Lapa, or training, if anybody wants to train your mind, or any no, not the mind, sorry. <laughs> So this is the reason that comes later. <laughs> so if anybody wants to do practice, or if anybody wants to train or practice, <laughs> okay, then you have to you have to pay attention to your mind. Yeah. So he said this 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 indicates without uh, pay attention the mental function one cannot practice at all. No? So this means the practice of uh, the Theravada, practice of uh, Mahayana, practice of like the profound practice of uh, Vajrayana. There are so many different uh, uh, kinds of uh, practices, but all based on this mind. Uh, very clear, Shantideva says. Means if you forget or ignore or neglect 
this very normal mind or the normal me mental function, then Lapa Soma Yong Minu. He said that you will be never able to, to practice. Very clear information. You can never escape from these beautiful <laughs> verses. So. <coughs> so the mind is so important. He didn't say meditation. He didn't say shuriyata. He didn't say the essence of the mind. He didn't say the clarity of the mind. He just said mind. <laughs> so, therefore, the as I said, the uh, simply knowing mind is important is not sufficient at all. So now, because you have to deal, we have to deal with the phenomenon of this so-called the mind or the consciousness and uh, scientifically you prove or you are catching up the Buddhist point, the viewpoint but that's not so important uh, because the certain degree that you are able to catching up but I'm sure that scientifically you uh, cannot make your enlightenment <laughs> at all but the, the, but the process the process towards the, the reality which makes much difference. <coughs> so therefore, we need to, uh, uh, like uh, the scientifically, like uh, research or whatever, it's very helpful. But uh, the most important is, as I said, you have to be mindful. So mindfulness is the, the most powerful function of the mind. Mm -hmm. So therefore, Buddha says, correct your mind. You cannot make correct your mind, but it's rather you correct the mental attitude. No? So, if you really want to uh, discover the essence of the mind, then the, through the training of recognition, through the training of not recognition, through the training of your mind, reshaping, reforming the mental attitude through these <coughs> processes, then one can find the essence or the trueness of your mind. So our ultimate goal, or ultimate aim, is to discover the reality of your mind, which is uh, far beyond that the current or the present, the mental function. That is something very extraordinary, like uh, the context or, or the phenomenon of the mind. So you don't need to have you don't need to have special lesson for so-called the finding. The, the reality of the mind. So the process is our everyday life. It's very normal, very basic, and very simple. But the only problem is because we do not pay attention. So therefore, I repeat again, the attention is so important. We do. Because why we don't pay attention? <laughs> because of the lack of mindfulness. There is no mindfulness. There is no cautiousness. There is no alertness. We are too much distracted in our mind. This tendency is so profound, so vast, therefore we can't get out of this. So therefore we are failed to apply the mindfulness. So, Tibetan word, Sen. And uh, without thought, and uh, we cannot identify what is the role of mind and what is the role of consciousness. So you, you see, when thought arises, then uh, this makes uh, the restless. Yeah? So when there is no thought, everybody is so calm. <laughs> yeah, and uh, peaceful, very peaceful. Because don't forget, <coughs> at that moment, you are in the, uh, on, the, on the right track. So mind is calm and in a peaceful manner and uh, nobody disturbs you, you don't disturb yourself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you sit on a chair so comfortably and uh, you don't need coffee, tea, you don't need anything that is so-called amusement or entertainment which you totally relax your mind. But then the some certain thought arise, then first your body is shaking and then your the voice is also shaking, so then you make everybody is shaking. <laughs> then instead of disturbing others, and you are disturbing yourself. 
Right? So you see, so powerful the mental attitude. You call thought, Tibetan word, nam do. But actually, it is nothing other than the mental function. It is very normal. But the problem is, we fixate it to the thought. The fixation, the fixation to this thought, the powerful <coughs> mental attitude. So this cause problem. If you are able to carry on to maintain in this peaceful manner, although thought arises, then thought will never disturb you at all. So what does it make difference because of the lack of training and the well training of your mind? And the lack of attention and the full <coughs> attention. So if you go along with the process of this training, everyday life, with the full of uh, the cautiousness and the mindfulness, then eventually you will be very happy. Although the thought keep arising one after another, but no longer this thought will disturb you. Huh? So it's like a wave that dissolves into the ocean. So the ocean is very peace and calm. Likewise, your mind is so calm. So from there, then eventually or slowly you will see, able to see the what is the essence of the mind. Tibetan word Korwe Sen Nyang Deji Sen The mind of Samsara and the mind of Nirvana. Um, so, which means um, that is very much teaching from Four Noble Truths. It's within the context of the Four Noble Truths. <coughs> when we talk about the, the mind of a Samsara, then you see the mind that is going through suffering, the pain, the misery, unpleasant, unfavorable, the circumstances. These are all mental function of samsara. But when we talk about the suffering here, when we talk about the suffering of the mind, it's not the suffering of the sensation alone. When we talk about the suffering of a sensation, like a physical pain, mental disturbances that everybody can sense easily. Uh, that is not the really uh, the characteristic of the suffering. The suffering here is much more subtle level, which only our hearts and the highly realized beings can sense it. So that is allowed like our the, the five scandals. The five scandals that is as a result from the affliction and its action. Nyunman and the Le. Our five clashes is not our choice. It is, uh, it is uh, the result, result of the, the mind of affliction and the, its action. So when we talk about the mind of a samsara, it's uh, like a cause and a result. The cause that is the mind of the samsara, that is the affliction and its action. As a result, than the mind of suffering, the pain, <coughs> the miseries. So it's all function. This is all a function of the, 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 the samsaric mind. The clashes is the Sanskrit term. So that means the five, um, no, five skandhas. Skandhas is a Sanskrit term. So which means the forms, the five forms, Tibetan word, pumbo. So that means the form, like a form of a rupa, then the form of a sensation, then the form of a, the perception, the form of a formation, and the form of a consciousness. So these are uh, so five scandals. So why, why I'm bringing this subject to here is because Tibetan word jewa. Jiawa means the life actually, it's not really, uh, directly you can sense Jiawa means born or take a birth, but it does not mean that you're born in a world, it doesn't matter whether you're born in a world or you were born somewhere else, it's up to you, but actually the, what I'm trying to tell you here is the life, so we have a problem with the life, huh? so you always say, oh my life is terrible, and sometimes you say, oh my life is so pleasurable. Yeah? So everything comes first is the life. So therefore, the life, that is, you are suffering with the life. 
So you have to send why you are having suffering in this in the life because the life itself is the result of the affliction. So the life sense is not like you, our body, it's not our brain or blood or some organs. But the life is the sensation, the life is the experience, life is the function of the mind that you feel I'm happy or I'm unhappy and I'm having enjoyable life or I'm having like a, the a sorrow life or or disgusting life so whatever you call so what makes the difference is these two different notions of the sensation because that the happy and the unhappy all this because of the function of your life which is inseparable from your mind so therefore when Buddha says same name mind is so what comes next is the mind is the source of all the experiences. No? So the Buddha lets you realize, the Buddha lets you understand that every experience that you are having, this come from the mind. Therefore, we have to do practice with the mind. As you know, the famous three verses from Buddha saying that um, the Tibetan was Dikpa Jiyang Michashing, which means uh, abandoned all kinds of uh, negative actions, abandon or or avoid. Then next is the Gewa Pusum Soparje, means adopt or practice all the all kinds of uh, virtuous action. And uh, two of them, these two verses, based on Rangi Semne Yongsu Tu. Many tul Tibetan words is a very useful word and a very profound word. But uh, many interpreters they translate pacify. And uh, but uh, to me it has so many meanings. You can have uh, uh, the perspective uh, way of uh, the Theravada, of course, pacify tul training. Do in the Mahayana practice develop, reshape the develop, yeah, okay, and do in the Vajrayana, particularly in the the oh, highest Yoga Tantra, the Anuttara Yoga Tantra. In this teaching, talking about transformation, bring bring this uh, bring mind. On, onto the path of enlightenment. This means transformation. So whatever, that is up to your level and your skill. I have no recomm recommend. So, so if you could train, okay, do train. If you are able to do transformation, okay, do transformation. So it's up to your skill and your 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 level of training. But the, the concept of the do in Tibetan word means generalize here, work with the mind. Mm -hmm. If you are able to work with your mind, then you are able to abandon the negative actions and then you are joyfully be able to adopt the virtuous action. And then the onwards, uh, the by development of your realization and your practice towards, then it leads on towards the, the full of enlightenment. So therefore, everything from the ground to the path to the fruition, every steps of the practices being able to perform by merely working with the mind. So therefore, Buddha advised or instructed work with your mind. Everybody knows Buddha did uh, turn the wheel of the Dharma three times in general. So the first turning of the wheel of the Dhamma is the, the Four Noble Truths. In this context, Buddha strongly um, tells the mind is existed. Right? So therefore, it's not for us to, the time to say the mind is empty. When you have a problem with the mind, don't think that mind is not there. 
don't tend to think or believe the mind is emptiness. It will definitely not work. <laughs> you get more trouble, I'm sure. So therefore you should think mind is existed. Now I have to work with your with the mind. That relieves your unnecessary anxiety. Yeah? So it helps you. So Buddha says mind is existed. This message is after he's enlightened, not before. <laughs> okay? So Buddha realized already the mind is not no longer existed. It is an emptiness. So Buddha fully realized. Yet his first message says the mind is truly existed. So the message is not before, it's after enlightenment. So therefore you should know the time wise. <laughs> Therefore, this <laughs> fundamental <coughs> experiential aspect is uh, the mind. So, as long as uh, we have a tendency to fixate to the mind as a mind, mind is as a mind, then we need to do practice. The practice of accumulation merit, the practice of uh, the purification of the negativities and the practice of for all the the uh, like a, a good uh, what you call good deeds or uh, the merit that you accumulate by body speech mind and that every single practice we have to do so that's very important so because of the naive perception sometimes we are too much sometimes overwhelmed and uh, our practice uh, sometimes we jump to the too advanced practice <coughs> like a shuniyata, the middle school, like in Madhyamika teaching, like a teaching of the Mahamudra and the Mahati because we have no foundation. The foundation that we have to work with the mind you know, is so important because like his holiness Devu Ketsar say, my guru, my root guru. So when he's a, such a highly realized <coughs> being, highly, ex excellently, <coughs> like he is a totally mastered the all teachings of Madhyamika, Mahamudra, Mahati, that he gives each and every single teachings from his own experience, not from philosophical experience, not only theoretical way, not only uh, intellectual way and not only spiritually or a spiritual way, but it's rather from it's a fundamental spiritual figure. But what his instruction? He instructed all his students to do accumulation of merit. <coughs> so once you are ready, then he says, I will let you know. <laughs> yes. That means you have to report the back to him whatever practice you have performed and he will examine are you ready or not. Now, so this sort of a very detailed and a very uh, important process that he, the lesson that he is uh, given, not that really I want to do Madhyamika practice now or Mahamudra teaching that I really want Mahamudra teaching. So therefore our practice doesn't really go smoothly. It disturbs and then on and off you are unable to carry it smoothly and steadily. So therefore, uh, mind is a very interesting uh, topic. So it's interesting because uh, if you pay attention, then you can work with your mind easily. If you don't pay attention, then your problem remains there always. Mm -hmm. uh, the problem with the, the mental problem. So mental problem there is with desire, anger, stupidity, pride, all this. So you are enjoying with it, but the more you enjoy with them, so they give you more problem. They never appreciate with you. But they, they don't care you appreciate them or not. But they want to give you more pressure. So therefore, so now you have to know how you should work with the with the mind. So this is the topic or the general explanation of semni, so the 
This means Buddha uh, says, what is mind, all the mind is. Either way. <laughs> <laughs> then, second is, the mind is devoid of mind. So we will continue uh, in the afternoon. Uh, so making before devoid of your mind, you should enjoy your lunch. <laughs> <laughs>